All right, we are back on Morning Line. Clint Kelly, our malpractice attorney, is on with us this morning. We can take your phone calls. It's always good to see you, Clint. Hi, it's good to see you, too. Good to see you. 737 7587. All right, we'll go back to the phone lines. I think we may have him on the horn there. Are you there, caller? Can you hear me, caller, Donnie? Yes. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. I'm a female, oh. not a man. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Go ahead, ma'am. I, I just want to know why I had a friend that had surgery at General Hospital, and they reduced her breasts, but when they got to take the bandages, she had no nipples. They said you cannot sue Metro General Hospital, and she just disfigured. So they, they did breast reduction surgery on her, and when they were done, the nipples were part of what was removed, and that was not part of what was expected? Um, they, they took the breast down. Okay. But they had no, when they took the bandages off, she had no nipples. So they removed those somehow? Yeah, and she went back. When she went back for her checkup, the doctor said some kind of way they may have threw them in the trash. Now, isn't that a male practice then? <laughs> It sure sounds it like it. It sounds like it. How long ago did that happen? Let me just ask that. Cause I know. Three years ago. How many? About three years ago. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, let's talk about two things that she's okay. raised. Let's go back to the, can you sue Metro General Hospital? You can sue them. But what you sue is you're suing Metro government. Okay. All right? There's a $300,000 cap on any lawsuit against Metro government because Metro government owns the hospital. Yeah. Now, you can sue the physician who did the surgery at Metro General, and those doctors have their own malpractice insurance, could be a million dollars or more. So, yes, you can sue Metro, you're gonna be limited, but you can sue the doctor who did the surgery who'll have more malpractice insurance. The problem here with Donnie is three years. Yeah, That's too long. We have a statute of limitations in Tennessee. You've got to sue within one year of discovering the injury. I mean, when she found out, when she woke up from surgery and found out she had no nipples, Mm -hmm. and is wondering what happened to my nipples. Yeah. That is notice to the patient something went wrong and it was caused by the surgeon who did the procedure. The statute of limitations begins running at that instant. Right. So basically what he's saying, ma'am, is that yes, this was likely a malpractice case. Mm -hmm. One that I think, you know, that's disfiguring. I would have wanted, wanted to investigate that. Yeah, you'd investigate it and it found that, that there were damages there, but statute of limitations has run out. It's been three years um, and so there's nothing that uh, she can do about it. There's no claim. There's no claim. There's no claim on that front. Is it, I'm, I'm wondering too, and, and she may say, well, they told me I couldn't sue, or who knows what she was really told yeah. by anyone. The bottom line, and she may have believed it, she may not have understood at the time what she could or couldn't do. A lot of people don't understand the law, Clint, to that degree. And, you know, um, as you know, there are doctors out there sometimes who know they did something wrong and say, well, let's just wait and see if you get better. Let's wait. And they purposely try to wait a full year so they're free and clear. Things like that can happen. There's I like to think most doctors are good and don't, but... There's a whole body of law, Nick, where patients have been misled by health care providers in terms of how they'll recover to keep them from suing, mm -hmm. okay? Unfortunately, the law is very strict on this. Ignorance law is no excuse. We've all known that. Yeah. So you are charged with notice that if you have been injured by the negligence of a health care provider, the clock starts ticking at that moment. Yep. It doesn't matter what that health care provider is telling you in terms of how you'll recover. It doesn't matter what that health care provider tells you in terms of whether they can be sued. The law says you know that you have a statute and you must comply. Which is all the more reason why call me. Mm -hmm. It's free. Yep. Get a consultation. You don't pay anything unless I recover money for you. Yeah. That's just how the system works. All the expenses for experts, like what I'm going to use in this uh, Centennial Medical Center case, I pay for all of that. Right. The client pays nothing unless I recover money for the client. And if I don't recover anything, which is, you know, the, the chances of that are extremely low, the client's going to pay nothing. Right. That's how you get paid is when you win so or I've get a never, settlement. I've yeah. never been able to understand why clients don't call lawyers immediately after something bad has happened to say, hey, Mr. Kelly, this is what happened to me or this is what happened to my brother Joe. I need to know, do I have a case? What are my rights under the circumstances? Right. And do it immediately. Don't wait weeks or months. My guess is it just because maybe they're dealing with whatever happened, it doesn't occur to them. I mean, I can't imagine someone saying, well, I think something was wrong here. Should I call Clinton? No, nah, I'm not going to do it. They don't think it doesn't occur. And it may be because you're still in such shock dealing with whatever happened to you. 
Now that's going to pass after a few days, you would think, and you start thinking, well, this was wrong. What can I do? I just truly believe there's some people that don't understand that they have that option. Well, that's maybe. why we do shows like this. Yeah, that's right, one exactly. of the purposes of this show is to let people know what your rights are so that you can make an informed judgment when it's necessary. Yes, there's shock. There's mm -hmm. always, I can imagine the shock of uh, Miss Stark when she watches her husband catch on fire and burn to death. And she didn't hire somebody immediately. But she had the good sense to know fairly soon, yeah. I'm going to need legal representation, if for nothing else, to find out what happened to my husband. Yep. What, why did this happen Which to is him? what she wants to know, yeah, first and foremost. Yeah, because she's not going to find out on her own. The hospital's going to give her the runaround. She has to have a lawyer to be able to actually learn the facts to make or to have the opportunity to learn what really happened. and you got to make that decision quick. That's why you want to call a lawyer as soon as something like this happens, because it's free. Yeah. Clint, you've handled some cases like this cosmetic-wise with regard mm -hmm. to Donnie. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm trying to get my hands around this. All right, this, this woman goes in what I assume might be some kind of breast reduction surgery, right. cosmetic. How on earth, and you and I did a case, um, mm -hmm. a story on it, uh, several years back mm -hmm. about a woman, I think, who had breast implants, and she went in and the, the doctor ended up doing much larger, I think, or something along those lines than what she expected. Or they, they, they went kind of off the game plan. And this surgeon, in Donnie's friend's case, mm -hmm. who on earth does this and removes the nipples? I mean, and if, if there was something that came up that caused it, you've got to explain it. Who on earth does it? How does that possibly happen? All right, Nick, when there's breast reduction surgery, believe it or not, that is what happens. They reduce the breasts, and in the course of doing that, because the breast has changed in position and shifted, yeah. the nipples have to be moved. Okay, so, so move. Okay. So they I'm remove just... the nipples and the areola. Okay. They remove that. They change the shape of the breast. Yep. So the location of the nipples is going to be a lot. It's going to be lifted up here. So they will move the nipple and areola higher up on the breast Makes and sense. sew it on there. What you don't do is discard them. Right. Which is what it sounds like. Just Donnie cut them was off, discard about. them, and leave them. And, yeah. and, and now, you know, I don't know if it costs more to do that. And whatever it was, he should have gone over that with her. Or she should have gone over that with her before they did the surgery. He said, listen, do you want us to move the nipples? Do you care? What? I don't know. Of and course you want can that. Make one. They can make a nipple, believe it or not. They can make, okay. make that. But it doesn't make sense to me. On what little information I have from right. Donnie, I can't tell you. But it doesn't make sense to me. You would discard that. You, you would want to keep those. And if you are going to manufacture Let's say use that word loosely. If you're going to make another nipple and an areola, I would think that's discussed with the patient on the front end. Probably. Okay. And it all comes back to standard of care. Correct. Discussing. You've talked on more than one occasion. When you sit down before the kind of surgery, unless it's an emergency surgery where you're not capable of doing it, you want to ask the questions, get into it with the doctor. Yes. In details. Yes. Because my, 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 my late great co-host, uh, Larry Britton, years ago, I told you this before, you know, he mm -hmm. was going to go have heart surgery and the doctor came and said, well, let me explain it to him. And he goes, uh, doctor. <laughs> do a good imitation well, of Larry. Larry. He, goes, he, goes, he goes, listen, you do this before? He goes, yes. Uh, then you're good at it? Yep. I don't need to know. Just do it. Right. Larry trusted everybody. And you know <laughs> well, what? they didn't, but in this case, he sure did. Yeah. Well, let's say trusted his doctor. Yeah. And 99% of us do. That's yeah. the way we're brought up. It's in our DNA as Tennesseans. It's just, it's a cultural thing. Right. All right? Yeah, it is. Um, I don't. <laughs> I ask questions of my doctors. Now, I believe that knowledge is power. And so after I've had a discussion with my doctor and I understand what's going on, then I have incredible trust, right? Sure. Because I know what's going on. But to blindly throw my fate into the hands of somebody without asking any questions to me is misguided trust. And that's how you get burned. No pun intended. Sure. That's, that's how people get injured. And so you always want to ask your health care provider or your surgeon, go through the steps of this with me. What are the risks? Explain them to me. You know, what are the odds of something bad happening to me as a result of this? And what are my alternatives? G give, me some, give me some idea of what other things I can do if I don't have the surgery. These are things that the doctors are supposed to tell the patients anyway, but you want to really push back on some of these things that you're hearing because these doctors get into a, into a mindset or a routine where it just all comes out the same way. It's like mm -hmm. brushing your teeth. And sometimes they don't really explain things very well to the point where the patient doesn't really understand what's going on and so they right. just kind of say, okay well doc i guess i trust you and then something bad mm -hmm. happens they come to me and say clint i can't believe this happened i said well tell me about the consent process what did you know what did you understand well i really didn't doc just says so and so and i said okay 
-hmm. And I'm sitting there thinking to my mom, well, why didn't you ask some more questions? And uh -huh. like, hey. It's a cultural thing. You I kind of accept it. it. In this day and age, too, we talked earlier about how mm. busy it is anyway. I mean, are all doctors always going to be? They should be. But, I mean, are they going to give you the time sometimes? Or, or you'll pick up the sense that, oh, they're, they're busy. And then, you know, they're your doctor, and so you kind of defer, you know. And The good ones do, Nick. The good ones do. Yeah, the good ones should talk yeah. to you. I, I, you know, um, when you talk about consent, is there anything you sign after they do this? And do you have to be careful about what you sign prior to surgery? Yeah. Well, everybody's been in the hospital who's had surgery knows that the nurse will come in there and drop documents in your lap right. and say sign these things sometimes when you got the IV in your in your arm <laughs> and what you're doing is you're signing there's two things going on a you're giving them written authorization to operate on you which they need to have and secondly the consent form will have the risks in there that are part of the procedure that you're supposed to be informed about and if they don't designate the risks like with bullet points it'll say something like I've been informed of all the risks associated with the procedure and I acknowledge that I've agreed to take to, to have this surgery subject to those risks and you'll sign off on it and then you'll have <laughs> litigation over what was it you really discussed with your surgeon good surgeons will spend a lot of time discussing the surgery with you and then they will document in their office those specific risks what I discussed with the patient okay so meaning that if they're really clear that this could happen it's yes. written there in black and white they warned you of it, and then it happens, and you yes. decide to sue. I think that is a good defense for them. Yes. They can say, listen, I, I told them this is a chance that could happen. They acknowledged, and they took that risk. Yeah. I mean, it's there in black and oh, white. Oh, and that's fine. That's fine. So look over that paperwork. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had, but I've had cases, Nick, where the paperwork is missing. Uh -huh. The risks are not identified in the chart, uh -huh. either in the consent form that was signed by the patient or the physician's office notes. That's what makes me as a lawyer suspicious. Did that conversation really take place when my client says it didn't? Take a break on that note. Back with our final segment right after this. Stay with us.